and welcome to the next video in the series Training with Feel. Today I'm going to focus on contact. Um, contact is something that is often talked about by dressage people, but it is relevant to the entire spectrum of riding. So it doesn't matter what discipline you're in, contact is, is part of being a good rider and good communication and good feel with your horse. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's relevant to everybody out there who rides a horse. Now, I want to say that contact, at least in the dressage world, is, is a pretty contentious issue. People argue about what it is all the time and a lot of people can't agree with it. You put 10 trainers in a room and you'll come out with a hundred different ideas of what contact is. Um, I, so I want to talk about this a bit. And <clears throat> the best thing I think I will start is with the dictionary. I mean, that's where we should start, see what the dictionary has to say about it. I've got the Bible here. Um, this is the Ross Jacobs Dictionary of Good Horsemanship Terminology. Everyone should have a copy. So, contact. 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 Okay. Contact. A thin curved lens placed on the surface of the... Uh, no, that's contact lens. Hold on. That's not right. I'm looking for contact. Okay, contact. A means of communication using physical touch. Okay, so there's a couple of elements there that we need to keep in mind. One is, is that its contact is made through physical touch and two, that it needs to communicate something. So it can't be totally irrelevant or not picked up by whatever you're touching. It needs to be a communication. So let me talk about what I think of as contact. And this goes at odds a lot with what I was taught as a young kid learning dressage. I was taught that contact, and we're talking about reins here, even though contact is relevant when you're talking about the legs and the seat and a whip and spurs and your hand, whatever. But today we're going to focus on, on the reins because that's what most people think of when they use the term contact. So when I was a kid learning, uh, con learning about dressage and contact was drilled into me by some pretty talented European dressage riders. They talked mainly about the weight in your hands, the how much the reins felt, how heavy it was, how light it was. If it was too light, didn't have enough contact. If you had a drape in the reins, you didn't have enough contact. If the horse's mouth was gaping, corners of his mouth was pulling back here like that, they would often think that was uh, too much contact. So it was a very much a mechanical and physical idea, concept of what contact is. But I've sort of changed my views about that from when I was a kid. And so this is what I think contact is. Contact is the minimum amount of feel or pressure placed on the reins to elicit a change of thought in a horse. So there's two things there to keep in mind. One, it's a minimum amount of pressure. The correct contact is the minimum amount of pressure you need. And two, it has to cause a change of thought in the horse. It can't just change what the feet are doing or the posture of the horse. It actually has to change what a horse is thinking. Having said that, the correct amount of contact will vary from horse to horse. And not only from horse to horse, but from moment to moment. So from horse to horse, you'll find you know, are off the track a thoroughbred or a racehorse, you might have to use 10, 20 kilos of rain pressure to get him to change what he's thinking, because that's what he's been taught by having jockeys that lean on the reins. Whereas a highly tuned, focused horse, highly educated, it might be, we're talking grams of change of rain pressure, just grams. So you may not even have the, the drape in the reins come out. It may never be even a taut rein because that horse, when he feels the rein go from that to that, that may have a whole lot of meaning to him and he may 
it may induce him to have a change of thought. And that would be correct contact. Incorrect pressure is the amount of pressure that's different from the minimum amount of pressure required to cause a horse to change his thought. So if you use too much pressure, it's wrong. If you use too little pressure, it's just as wrong. This can be hard for people to understand, but the reason that I'm talking about this in a series on training with feel is that in order to be able to apply pressure from moment to moment to cause a change of thought, it means your contact is constantly changing. It means you constantly have to feel back what a horse is presenting. You have to know what he's thinking. You have to know where the resistances are and where the softnesses lie so that you can adjust and keep the correct contact always. And the correct contact will only come because you're constantly changing the contact. It's not a fixed feel. Having said that, that'll keep you really busy on a green horse that doesn't understand really how to stay focused and follow the feel of the reins. His mind's always bouncing around. So you'll be pretty busy with these reins, always adjusting and helping him. But as he gets more educated and the reins have more meaning, he's more calm, he's more focused on the rider, then you can get less busy and you'll find he will be able to work with you with a minimum amount. So the addition to that idea is that as a horse progresses, the contact should become lighter and lighter and lighter. You should require less pressure to create a change of thought. So you should be able to do more with a horse by doing less with the reins. And this is not always true. You see a lot in modern competition dressage in particular. The more advanced the horses get, the heavier they get. The more difficult the movements are, the more resistance the heavier they are. And some of these riders have upper body strength that would compete well against world weightlifting champions because they're wrestling the horses, because they have not taught their horses that the minimum amount of pressure should induce a change of thought in their horse. They just try to make the feet behave what they want it to do. So I'm going to uh, try and demonstrate some of these concepts to you and hopefully that'll clear up anything that I may be confusing you about and then we'll come back and talk at the end of that. I'm here with my friend Sam. Sam's visiting from Chicago for a, about three weeks and he's kindly offered to help me with this demonstration on contact. Um, Sam doesn't know much about horses. In fact, this morning he had his first ride on a horse in his entire life. So he's an ideal candidate to help me with this project because he, he's not very uh, knowledgeable about the reins and contact and stuff. So I can treat him like a very green horse. Thanks, Sam. So to start with, I have in my mind the sort of walk I want Sam to have. And I'm going to try and give him the amount of contact on the reins that allows him to walk in the way that I would like him to walk. So Sam, if you just walk forward, and that's pretty much the sort of walk I want Sam to have. Great. Now let's come back and we'll do it again. Now this time Sam's going to have a little more energy in his walk. And I'm going to present the reins and see if I can slow him down. Let's go. So I haven't got enough contact here to slow him down and get a change of thought. So that was incorrect contact. That wasn't enough contact. Now I'm going to take quite a stronger contact and try and get Sam to walk the walk I want him to have. So if you go again, Sam. Come on, Sam. Come on. So here I've got too much contact and I'm in, getting in the way of Sam going forward, but I still want him to go forward. I keep telling him to go forward. And a lot of us ride that way. A lot of us ride with a really strong contact and then we're always driving the horses forward. But we're getting in the way. So we're going to do it one more time. And I'm going to do, I'm going to ask Sam to go forward 
and we're going to, I'm going to not tell him what I want and see if I can adjust the contact to give him what I want. Okay, Sam, thank you. There I, interrupt, there I interrupted him. There I got a change of thought and he gave me a better walk. So this is just going to be a little bit about the use of the reins and, and what you can feel. We'll start with that. So I want you to just tell me when you feel me starting to make an adjustment to the reins, okay? Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, so. I feel that. Okay, so I've gone from that position to that position and that meant something to you, you felt it. Yeah. So my job then as a horseman and as a trainer is to teach you that when you feel those reins come into play, that it actually has a meaning and it's telling you, it's communicating with you how to respond, whatever it is, whether it's to stop or to turn or to back up or to change your posture, whatever. So that's what I have to teach you. So we're going to pretend that you're quite a, um, a soft and responsive horse. So I'm going to ask you to walk just forward a few steps and then I'm going to pick up a feel on the reins and I want you to respond to what you feel the reins are telling you to do. Okay. Okay, so just walk now. So you ran into those pretty hard. Yeah, but that was, that was a stop, yeah. Okay, so just step back a bit so we stay in frame. Okay, so we'll do it again. Now I want you to walk. Okay, yeah. so that was a lot softer, mm -hmm. you were more responsive and the, there was still a drape left in the reins. So that's the right amount of contact for that and, the, and when you're a little more resistant like you were the first time, let's do that again, and you'd be a little more resistant I take up the contact, that is the right amount of contact because see when you stepped back it meant that your thought was no longer carrying your feet forward because you thought oh I have to step back. Mm -hmm. And that's got a change of your thing in your thinking, and that's what contact is. Contact is enough pressure that causes a horse to want to change what they're thinking, whether it's to turn or to step back or to stop. So we'll just come back again, and we might just see what happens. Go with whatever you feel the reins are telling you. Okay. Okay. So just walk forward. And there, it asked you, I used one rein, and it was quite a light contact and you were able to turn to your right. Yeah. And that's exactly what I want to teach my horse. And I'm going to use as little as I can. Now let's again, let's one more time, just pretend you're a pretty resistant horse, okay? So we'll do the same thing, but now you're going to be pretty resistant. So now I'm going to have to do a lot more with my rein to get you to turn. Yeah. And in both occasions, I use the correct amount of contact because it's contact, correct contact is the amount of pressure you use to create a change of thought in a horse. Well, thanks, correct. Sam. That's fantastic. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The great Portuguese riding master, Nuno Oliveira, once said that contact should be a secret between the horse and its rider. And I totally agree with Nuno. It should be a secret. But I emphasize that the words should. We are aiming to the point where we can do so little and it can have such a strong meaning to a horse that it would appear from anyone outside watching that we did nothing. But while a horse is learning how to follow the feel of the reins and give it meaning, then sometimes the contact is more than just a little. Sometimes it can be quite a lot. And that's the right amount of contact for that horse in that moment. But we constantly should be working towards the day that it appears that it, the degree of contact and its influence on a horse looks like we are doing nothing. Good night, Alice, wherever you are.